there's a game app that's running a big square texture, and then there's the BR runtime. And the BR runtime takes that texture and it modifies it to go onto a BR headset. That runtime is primarily responsible for doing two big things. One, it has to adjust for lenses. So there's a lens in your VR headset that the game doesn't know about. But what the VR runtime has to do, it takes actually a fairly large square that's rendered, like imagine it's a, no, about this big, and it squishes it in. Because you're gonna view that squished in image through a lens that's gonna blow it back out. Okay, so think of it as sad. I'm very sad because the pixels that were rendered out here got squished in and you actually lost information. You could think of that as sadly wasted GPU effort, which I am, you know, hurt by. Now this is a picture of the delivered density to the eye. Okay, so what's happening is you rendered it really big and then squished it in so the sides get a lot of information and it turns out actually that the center has too little information. Because while the sides are squeezed in, the center is actually blown out because the lens is symmetric. Okay, so what this is telling you is if you do nothing special, like if you just render a VR game without any special stuff, your center where you're looking is actually undersampled, and your edge is dramatically oversampled, and that is a tragedy. Okay, are you guys with me so far? Yes, excellent. Okay, so now what is LMS and what is MRS? Well, that's our way of adjusting the way the render works so that we don't have to sacrifice this. So remember, I guess you guys remember it as well as I do, the moment when we showed you, <laughs> showed you a cone, okay? In three dimensions, imagine you're looking at a projection space and there's a cone. That cone kind of looks the way a, a lens does. That's why we call that lens match shading. But what we're actually doing is changing the shape of the projection, right? We're kind of projecting onto a, a deformed shape in three dimensions, which means that we can actually get sample density to exactly match what the lens is going to do almost. Okay, so the sample density matching the lens means the amount of pixels rendered actually can be less. Okay, so if you do that, like, like when we started, we actually had to render 2.5 megapixels per eye if you did nothing. Render 2.5 megapixels per eye. We actually only show you 1.1 megapixels per eye because of that distortion. So somewhere around, you know, half the pixels are wasted in normal VR. This is uh, using a vibe, by the way. Oculus is slightly different, but you get the kind of order of magnitude. So that tells you the opportunity, right? There's half the pixels that can be recovered. So when you look at what LMS is doing, we're putting a very close to the right shape projection. And that means we only actually have to render 1.5 megapixels per eye. But what a lot of people have not yet realized, I'm gonna tell you if you're paying close attention, right here, this is red. And red means the quality of the image rendered is kind of crappy because you are undersampled. Now, this has no red, which means not only is it faster, but the image quality that we're generating is actually better with a denser sample grid in the center where you're looking. Okay, so let's do some quick mass math. We went from uh, around 2.4 megapixels per eye down to about 1.57 megapixels per eye, and the quality got better. Okay, so if you, if you add all that together, it says, hey, SMP, that technology is going to be in VR games everywhere because it's awesome. Okay, everybody get what I'm saying? Yes, yes. <laughs> SMP good. Okay, and I want to say thanks to Emmett because this chart is actually really illustrative, right? You can think of it as here's where we start when there's no MRS or SMP, and you can see how the shape gets, you know, where there's no oversampling in the edges, and then this is getting more aggressive. You know, you can actually start getting more aggressive and getting higher performance with some quality trade-offs. So if you're very aggressive, we can actually, at 1.17 megapixels, get back to effectively the same undersampling that's happening with the default mode. Okay, so the point is, LMS has got a lot of different settings. Most of them are better quality than the default. All of them are higher performance. Okay, so if you think about that, it's a great segue to why are we getting amazing adoption. We've completed the works for VXWorks to take it into DX12. So that's available now online. It of course includes things like direct mode, LMS, and uh, also uh, MRS. So all of that technology is available now for direct 12 developers. It's gonna be awesome. The next big announcement is we've moved all of this technology into Unity. If you don't know, Unity is one of the most 